Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at another set of budget-friendly pencils. These are the Mark Art pencils, and they've been on Amazon for about oh, I think maybe a year. And I heard about them a while back, probably about six months back or so. And they um, kind of piqued my interest because some other um, colored pencil users were very excited about these. I didn't really want to get another 48 set. I didn't think the variety would be that exciting. And I thought I would just kind of wait and see um, whether they stuck around or not. Cause sometimes the budget pencils are kind of fly by night. They, after that released a set of 72 and then a set of 120. And, um, um, so I just had been keeping my eyes open for a sale and during Prime Day the set of 72 went down to $20 and that's when I bought them and the 120 set was twice as much so I figured I would get this it was the best per pencil price and it would give me a good overall um, look at the pencils, how they perform, the color range, and um, I really don't need that many budget pencils, but people were interested in this as well. It was one of my requested products to review, so I thought I would grab it to give it a try. So this is what they look like. There is a swatch on the inside of the tin with um, the color names and numbers, which is handy because often, especially if the tin's connected, the swatch will be on the outside and then it's hard to see. And I just kind of put these in rainbow order. They're not uh, arranged that way. They're kind of arranged with all the pastels together and then uh, like yellows, reds, blues, grays, and browns. You can see that if you look at the Amazon listing. I'll link to that down below if you want to uh, see these. They all sharpened very well. I didn't have any breakage issues, although the tips were a little bit crumbly if you um, sharpen them to a really fine point. Take a look there. We got two levels. This this one's prettier though. I love warm colors. There's a really nice assortment of pastel colors here, which is nice. Um, and in fact, they remind me a lot of the Holbein pencils and also the Arteza 2019 version, the ones that weren't water soluble. So a lot of budget pencils um, actually end up being kind of water soluble. So I tested these. I tested these with a bunch of other ones. Um, I have this back from when I did the. Um, Oh, I can't remember what I was reviewing, but I was com I was kidding. Oh yeah, I was reviewing the Brute Footer ones. So this was me really scrubbing these out and there wasn't a ton of bleed through, not like a lot of the other ones. So um, that was kind of nice. Um, I like the way these performed. They performed the most like the Holbein or Arteza. Uh, I do these little strip, these little strips of swatches so I can kind of see how the different colors combine. I actually did water over these just to see if I could pull any color and it wasn't very, very noticeable. Um, I did it on another swatch too, if I can find it. I might have tossed that one though, to be honest. Oh, right here, yeah. I did water and water didn't really affect them. Then I did some OMS and I could move them with the odorless mineral spirit. So, um, so I was just kind of, I, I just kind of do a bunch of little tests and put it all together. So lay down wise, they reminded me a lot of the Holbein and the Arteza. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the 2019 version of Arteza pencils are the same as these Mark Arts. Now Mark Art is manufactured by Nioni in China. They're one of the kind of legacy Chinese brands. So I think Delhi and Nioni are probably the two most reputable uh, Chinese produced pencils. So um, as far as budget pencils go, they're kind of nice. Now the Arteza, pencils have kind of priced themselves out of the budget range recently, but um, I would consider them on par with these Mark Arts. In fact, I would say these behave so much like the Arteza's, thickness of lead and everything. I can show you an Arteza side by side if you want. I, and I'll show you some little swatches I did side by side just because they just reminded me so much. Let's see, we'll grab. The, uh, the thickness of the lead I found to be very comparable to the Nioni, the, um, even the printing. And it was funny because I was noticing they felt similar before I noticed they both have the, word, the term expert printed on them. Um, thickness of the lead, very similar. They're both four millimeter leads. They're both the same, feel like the same diameter. They feel very similar in the hand. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they are made in the same factory and I would double check to make sure I'm putting the right one back in the box. They also remind me of Holbein and I'll show you a Holbein. Just the lay down is so similar. It's not even so much the printing on the tins, it's just, or on the pencils, it's just the lay down. That kind of firm, thick lead, a little on the waxy side. Um, and let's get this one looks pretty close. So with the Holbein, this is Holbein on the bottom. This is the Mark Art 
above uh, printed in gold. I don't see color names on the mark arts. There are color numbers. There's actually two color numbers. There's the mark art number and then there's the Naomi number on the mark arts. And of course, this is the Holbein, Holbein down below. We can do, I can actually swatch these side by side just to show you. We'll do it on this. Um, We'll do it on this paper right here. So this is the Holbein, going with a light pressure. This is the uh, Mark Art or Nioni, going with a light pressure. They lay down pretty much the same. This one's a little bit sharper. The, the, um, the Mark Art's a little sharper, so it was laying down just a little bit better. I'll just go crosswise with the Holbein, and I'll do crosswise with the Mark Art slash Nioni. And actually I could do a contrasting color. I just gotta make sure I get these in the right boxes. <laughs> Let's do a contrasting color. Let's do, I uh, will do white because I think the whole white white's gonna be quite a bit better. I'll just do a scribble in the middle so you can kind of see. I'll do a scribble of the Mark Art in the middle so you can see. You know, very comparable how they push the pigment around. The lay down is so similar that I would almost say if you're if you're considering buying Holbein pencils, but the price is putting you off because the price on Holbein's is extraordinary. They're about four dollars a piece, whereas these are I don't know seven. We got seventy two for twenty bucks. And they're twenty five dollars right now. Uh, they're a lot less. <laughs> um, yeah, they're I mean they're pennies. They're pennies on the dollar of what a Holbein cost. So if you're wondering if you would like the lay down of Holbein's, I don't think it would hurt you at all to get the set of 72 mark arts and play with them because especially because I really like the pastel range that's in these mark arts. I'd say if you have the Arteza set, um, even the 120 set, it may be worth getting this 72 set just for the pastel range because there really isn't any pastels in the Arteza range. It's very strange. There's no pastels. Um, the white's not too bad in this either, which is nice. So if I look at my swatches here, Look at the Mark Art white compared to the Holbein white. That's Mark Art. That's Holbein. Very comparable. The Arteza white is very weak next to the uh, next to the Mark Art of the Holbein white. So I would say I, I actually think the Mark Arts are better, maybe a little bit better quality than Arteza. They just seem seem so similar that I would say they're they're on par with one another. Um, but the Mark Arts have more pastels and a more opaque white. So it could be they're the same. Coming out of the same factory, they just chose different colors because I was trying to match up colors and I was not having luck matching up exact colors between Arteza and Mark Art. And I have the Arteza 120 set and the Mark Art 72. So as far as layering, I was able to get six layers using, and I had to start putting more pressure on, on layer five and six, just to let you know. These are a firmer pencil. Um, these might not be the best if you struggle with hand issues or if you like to blend by force, but if you like to sharpen your pencils to a point and layer, um, these are a really nice pencil for that. That's not really like how I like to work. I prefer to uh, put down thick passages of color and blend um, by burnishing. Um, so these would take me longer. You know, I would have to do the layers because, you know, brute force is not the best technique with these pencils. Um, I tend to compare everything to Prismacolors. I do find these to be a little bit more opaque than a lot of the other budget pencils. They're softer than the Deli pencils that um, if I haven't reviewed them yet, they're coming up. I already recorded the review. I'm just not sure how I'm going to uh, parse them out. I can show you the Deli the Deli swatches. The Deli pencils are a lot like Polychromos and the Mark Hart slash Nionis are a lot like Holbein. Uh, so this is the Deli, the Starjoy Deli pencils. And I found them to be um, harder and a little bit streakier, but I think it's just because they are harder. Didn't have any scratchiness with these, didn't have any breakage. Um, other than, like I mentioned before, the tips can can um, can kind of shatter if you sharpen them really fine uh, because they're a little bit softer, I think. But um, yeah, overall, I'm pretty impressed with these. I think if you want a firmer pencil, if you want something like a Holbein, then uh, these are a good option. Um, they're a little bit cheaper than the Artezas, so like a set of 120 of the Mark Art is 40 bucks. And let's see what an Arteza is going for. Let's see, Arteza 120 is on sale for $47.99, but is normally 60 bucks. So yeah, they're about 20 bucks cheaper than Arteza not on sale. 
So it's something to consider, but the, with the addition of the pastels and the marker art colors, you probably wouldn't be upset if you like the Artisas already and you have them and you wanted to add the marker arts to them. Now, another thing I want to bring up though is that there's been a new iteration of Arteza pencils since um, the last set that I have, which is the 120 from 2019. And the newer ones seem to be water soluble versus water resistant. These are quite water resistant. The Artisas are absolutely water resistant. Um, these seem like the 2019 Artisas, so. If you liked those and you want some similar, these might be the way to go. I know Arteza is offering open stock, but they've changed their color numbers. They said you can match them up by the names of your older pencils, but uh, the fact that they've changed the color numbers made me think there's probably a different factory involved. They may be, the new Artezas might even be Star Joy Delis for all I know, because those also felt kind of like Artezas, but they were water soluble and they just, um, they were a little bit harder than, than, the, um, than, than the Artezas that I have, so. It's, and those are very small differences. Um, I consider, that, consider them to be very small differences, but I also tend to prefer softer pencils, so I might not notice some of the nuances between some of these harder pencils that other reviewers might, so it's a good idea to check other reviews before you buy any product. So I did a blending ball here. This is just where I draw a circle, and I, um, and I just use, uh, I layer up the colors and blend, and then towards the end I use some pressure. And um, these are not water soluble enough to blend, but you can use odorless mineral, mineral spirits with them. I'm just gonna, I put uh, cotton balls in my thing of mineral spirits so I don't get too much. And we can blend them really nicely. I left it unblended so I could do that. You do wanna have quite a bit of pencil down if you're gonna do the blending, if you do wanna get a nice uh, smooth coverage. I should probably start it in the middle. And then after that dries, you can go over and get more layers. So if you get stuck in an area where you need more than six layers, then you can, um, and you're on a smooth paper like the Stonehenge, then you can go over. And then I just clean my brush by wiping it on the top of the cotton balls. So it works out really well. I don't have to change your cotton balls too often. Now this is a uh, finished artwork I did with these pencils, this uh, chunk of geode here. Um, I really enjoyed working with them, but that said, I am not an artist who likes to layer. So there was a lot of layering to go like going on at first. And then I went in with pressure with the white pencil and did a lot of blending with pressure with lighter colors and blended it, them out. And I really liked how they came out and did a little dabs of um, gel pen at the end just to uh, add some sparkle. But they were, they were fine to use. They were fun. They were a lot like using the Holbeins with the layering. Um, like I mentioned, I prefer a faster operation so if I was going to do a final artwork to hang on the wall I would use my Derwent Lightfast because they just they're softer and they blend and mix more than a layer and Prismacolors also you can kind of mix them together a little bit more than layering and that's that's my preference in a pencil so I like these given even given the fact they're a harder pencil but you might want to check in with other reviewers that prefer pencils more like the uh, like Holbein and Polychromos and you know, the firmer ones and see what they think about these but um, but I think they're a good buy I think for the price they are you really you can't go wrong if you need pencils that are probably not light fast and um, not available open stock so that's another thing I mean you're not gonna be able to buy an individual pencil but um, if you really like these and you started to get low on some colors, then you could then go on like blick.com uh, Blick and you could s like match up with Holbein colors and you could purchase like, um, you know, the mint blue or whatever it is that you need from Holbein and you can build up a, a you could build up a selection of colors, just the ones you actually use. And that would give you good insight to what those colors would be before spending like $450 on the set of 150 Holbeins. You know, you could get just the colors you want. And I think that's a useful way to use the budget sets. Now, something I did, um, when I was, I, I've decided I'm not swatching full sets of pencils anymore. I don't swatch pencils for my own personal use, like color pencils. I will watercolor pencils and water soluble media, but not regular colored pencils, not pastels, not, um, not oil pastels, not so soft pastels or regular colored pencils, anything opaque. I just look at the media itself. So I'm not going to do that anymore for the reviews, especially budget pencils. I probably would if it was a high-end pencil, just because I want to be absolutely sure if I'm recommending something that's expensive, that it is worth it. Um, and that I've shown all the, any potential idiosyncrasies, but for my own, I don't find swatching colored pencils helpful for me in my own work. Um, because they pretty much look like what they are when you look at the tips. But anyway, I did swatch some of them on black because you never know how pencils are going to react on black cardstock, and they did quite well. They're not super opaque. Like, this is watercolor paper that's got a strip of black marker, so they're not super opaque. Um, you know, the whole bind is more opaque, 
but they're not bad. They're pretty close. I wouldn't want to do a full artwork on black paper unless it was like pastel matte, which it, where it has so much tooth that it will just take enough media for you to be able to build up on there. But you know, you, if you were like a rubber stamper and you wanted a set of pencils that was strong, that could withstand, um, you know, travel, that could, um, maybe you could use with your kids and not worry about them getting broken and shattered like Prismacolors, and you occasionally want to color on darker media, I think this would work fine for that. And then I compared the, um, I compared the Mark Arts to some other pencils. So this is me comparing them against Arteza. I had one where I was comparing them. Oh, on the back side, I was comparing them against Holbein. You can see the Holbein, the H. And I'm either putting an N for Nioni or M for Mark Art because they're the same pencil. Um, the Holbeins did show up a lot, like quite a bit more in some colors. Others, not so much, but the Holbeins just seem to be more pigmented and more opaque on the black. Um, so that's something to consider. The whole bunch is definitely going to work better on black for you, but they're, you know, how many times are like 10 times a price or something crazy like that? So, um, you know, you kind I mean, yeah, you could say get what you pay for, you know, you're going to pay 10 times the price, you're going to get a better pencil, but are you getting 10 times better pencil? No, I don't think so. Um, I think these were, these would be good, like training wheels for, for whole binds, if that's the direction you want to go in. Um, and that's pretty much it on these. Um, I think that they are, I think they're worth the money. They're not, you know, they're not expensive. They're not super cheap either. So I would make sure you like a firmer pencil before you, before you go for these. But, and, and if you really love, uh, the feel of Holbein, the feel of the 2019 Artezas, then, you know, you might enjoy the 120 set. I would go online and look at the swatches and see. It seemed like a lot of the pastels are right here in this 72 set, so I don't know if, um, if I would find the 120 that much more, that much more appealing. Only you can say, you know what you have. I would actually mix these with other pencils because I can see... I, I would probably just take these and mix these with um, Prismacolors even. Even though these are much harder than my Prismacolors, I could see having the, the benefit of having some of those pastel shades. Um, or mix them with the Holbeins. Except Holbeins should be much more light fast than these, and I say should be because, you know, I don't know. There's been some... There's been some there's been some talk about their light fast testing. I'm not I, I'm not an expert with colored pencil light fast testing, so I'm not going to get into it. But um, especially if there's no pigment information available, I wouldn't even venture a guess on how light fast things were. Uh, I don't believe these have any light fast readings on them, and I don't see any on the tin. I'm just going to flip it over. This does uh, come with one of those plastic sheets that I think are for like putting between your sketchbook or coloring book pages to keep you from denting the next page. Um, yeah, there's no light fast information, so yeah, I, I would I would say they're probably not, or just buyer beware. Use them in your sketchbooks or your coloring books. Have a good time with them. Learn 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 yourself color pencils with these. You know, learn how to use the layering techniques with these, and um, you'll probably be pretty happy with them. I like a softer pencil. Um, <laughs> so I, as far as a harder pencil goes, I like them. I, li I like them as well as Holbein. I'll tell you that. Um, just because I feel like the, the lay down is so similar. Whole bonds are more pigmented, but other than that, um, they're very comparable and very comparable to the 2019 version of Arteza. That's really all I have to say about these. I'm trying to get through some of the budget pencils that I purchased to review so that hopefully it will help you as you're doing your holiday shopping, trying to decide what you might want to get for yourself or your kids for a good quality product at maybe a lower price. And one of the reasons you might want to go with, say, a Mark Art over a Prismacolor, Prismacolor is my most used pencil, by the way, it's not my favorite pencil, but it's my most used pencil. It's kind of like, I can say, I can objectively say that pretty much any pencil that Durant makes is better than a Prismacolor, but it's, I can also say carrot sticks are better for you than potato chips, but what do I want to eat? <laughs> I want the potato chips. <laughs> um, the, one of the reasons you might want to go with something like this over a Prismacolor if you're getting a gift for your kid is just the durability of these firmer leads. You drop a Prismacolor once, you're going to be break that the thing's going to give you nothing but trouble for the rest of its life. You drop one of these, I mean, it's not a great practice, but because they have sturdier, harder leads, they are not going to shatter as much as a Prismacolor. And um, they're just going to be a little more durable if you move, if you want to travel with your set, you want to bring it, throw it in a bag. Um, I hate using those pencil wallets that all the pencils go in a slot. So I either use them from the tin or I put them in jars while I'm using them. And uh, I think most people probably do that, so unless your kid likes to have their stuff in a, like a booklet that they can flip through for their pencils. And there's no risk of them dropping. You know, this might be a better choice. And it's cheaper than Prismacolor too. So 
and it's got kind of that opacity that Prismacolor has. You know, I think there's a perfect pencil for everyone out there, no matter what your budget, no matter what your preferences are, and maybe this one is for you. Um, I certainly had fun using them, but the fact that I have to do more layering with these and less um, burnishing makes them not as good for me. It doesn't mean they're any worse or any better. I just prefer a softer pencil. Um, so there you have it. I think they're good though. And I hope you enjoyed this review. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.